Hey, what's up, everybody? Jimmy Smith, back with my uh, pre-fight breakdown. This time, Shabazian versus Brunson, UFC Fight Night. Let's take a look at the card. We start at the bottom. Kevin Holland versus Trevin Giles. This fight, this card, period, has a lot of fights. Very few have title implications. I would say only the co-main event, Joanne Calderwood versus Jennifer Maya, because Calderwood, Calderwood had a fight for the title coming up, and she took this one on late notice. Maybe the winner gets a title shot. Other than that, it's mostly just bangers who are going to give us interesting fights. I think they'll be very, very exciting. Not a ton of stakes on this one. We start off with Kevin Holland versus Trevin Giles. Um... Both guys make a lot of mistakes on the ground positionally. We saw that uh, Trevin Giles against Gerald Mearshart was mounted, got out of it, got good position, lost it, swept a bunch of times, never able to sit his hip down, hips down and really keep position. Um, Kevin Holland had a similar problem. Uh, his loss against Brendan Allen, it was he would get in positions, fall into submissions, get out of them, end up in another submission, couldn't settle down on the ground and, and really have a technique battle or positional battle on the ground. On the feet, the one thing about Trevin Giles is he tends to let his hands float very, very low. He's explosive. He can drop you with a shot. He has some power. Uh, hits quickly from the outside, but takes a lot of risks coming in. He explodes over territory with his hands down. That seems to be the hallmark of his style. Holland is explosive as well, um, does have decent power punches, keeps his hands a bit higher, throws better combinations, and I think that might be the edge here. I said both guys make mistakes on the ground, so who's got the slight edge on the feet? I would say that's Kevin Holland. Also, Trevin Giles hasn't beaten a legit middleweight in his last three fights. Uh, yeah, he beat James Krause. James Krause is a puffed-up Welterweight, you could argue lightweight, who took that adv- took that fight on, I think, three days' notice. So two losses before that. So he's he hasn't beaten a legit middleweight in three fights. So I think uh, Kevin Holland, on the better streak, he gets the win in the first fight of the night. Uh, next one up is Lando Vanata versus Bobby Green. Bobby Green, one of those guys, when he came into the UFC, uh, beat Josh Thompson and was one of those that people thought could really be a contender at 155 pounds. I called his fight in affliction against Dan Lazan and lost that fight, but that was a short notice one. We thought, hey, he could really do something at 155, and he never got over the Josh Thompson win. That was the high point of his MMA career, or at least it has been so far. Yes, uh, coming off a win over Clay Guida, but this is a guy physically talented, uh, explosive, good wrestler, mixes it up well, uh, a lot of heart, a lot of guts, tenacity, doesn't tend to run out of gas late, and never lived up to the the hype. Or not the hype, but w- what people expected of him to do after the Josh Thompson fight. I mean, that was really the high point of his career. Uh, Lando Venata, those two fought before. It was a draw last time. Uh, it was too long ago for me to say that it, it has a whole lot of bearing on this fight, but Venato was another one of those guys. When he came to the UFC, had a war with Tony Ferguson, lost by Darstroke, but almost finished Tony Ferguson. Back and forth fight, had him rocked, and that's not an easy thing to do. With uh, Tony Ferguson's chin, of course, Ferguson isn't the fighter he is now, but that was another fight that a lot of people thought, okay, this guy can really do something, and that was kind of it. Wins over John McDessie. Uh, of course, coming off one over Yancey Medeiros, but never lived up to the hype he had either. So this is a tale of two guys who were supposed to do more than they have done. So what do you look at? I look at the fact that Bobby Green, the win over Clay Guida, I think it's a very faded Clay Guida. Um, yeah, it's a win, but it, it doesn't mean he's necessarily back on track or he is what he used to be. Yancey Medeiros, I give, I definitely give uh, Ven Adam more credit for that fight. Tactically, these guys know each other well. I don't think there are any big surprises. That kind of negates the physical advantages of Bobby Green, who I think is the better athlete. i got to go with Van Atta probably by decision. Uh, more than likely a close fight. I think it goes late, but I give Van Atta the win on that one. So let's get into the meat of the card. Vicente Luque versus Randy Brown. This should be fight of the night. Uh, Vicente Luque, destructive, great striker, explosive, wonderful power, always exciting. I love watching him fight. Randy Brown's another guy. Nice hands, good knockout power. The key to this fight. Now, I would, I, I definitely call Vicente Luque the favorite. I think he's going to win it. How can Randy Brown win? Well, look at the Barbarena fight. When he, fight, when he fought Brian Barbarena, a lot of sidekicks, a lot of push kicks, very fast with his feet, very good at controlling the distance in that fight. If he does that, he can do a little bit of what Wonderboy Thompson did to Vicente Luque, which is frustrate him from the outside. Vicente Luque does have decent kicks, but he's more of a puncher. That's where he's really at his best. Great combinations, uh, very aggressive, 
and an excellent finisher. If Randy Brown can keep him on the on the outside with his feet, make him leap when he doesn't want to, make him get overly aggressive with his punches, he can catch him coming in and finish him. Finish him. Randy Brown does have excellent power. I think Vicente Luque is a little too experienced for that. Yeah, Wonderboy Thompson was able to keep him on the outside with his kicks, but Wonderboy Thompson, I think, does that better than almost every, anyone in the world. So the fact that he couldn't get inside on Wonderboy Thompson doesn't mean he can't get inside on Randy Brown. Randy Brown has good footwork, does have good kicks. I don't think it's enough. I think Vicente Luque is the superior kickboxer. I think his experience is a little bit too much for him. And coming off the doctor's top edge of Nico Price, which, which was an excellent fight, I think he has momentum on his side. Uh, I think... Uh, Rude Boy Brown tries to keep him outside of the kicks, but I don't think it works. I think Vicente Luque wins, probably by decision. Joanne Calderwood, Jennifer Maya. I interviewed Calderwood for, Calderwood for ESPN International uh, yesterday and talked to her about the fight. I'm amazed she took this fight. Uh, she, has a, she had a title fight set up with Valentina Shevchenko. And that fell through, and she takes this one on uh, late notice. She only She's only riding a one-fight win streak. It's not like she's won 10 in a row. If she loses this, it's a small step back, but she'll get back there. If she loses this fight, she might never get her title shot. Now, her logic was, look, if I can't beat number six, why should I fight number one? I understand that completely. But taking it late notice, yeah, she was getting ready for the champ, so I, I think she was physically prepared. A stand-up striker in Maya, who's from the old shootbox camp, which means Muay Thai, clinch, aggressive, tempts to, to fight linear, I mean, forward, backward, that's about it. Not a lot of footwork, um, but dangerous enough. And also, Jennifer Maya has missed weight her last two fights. What happens if she's two pounds over and you have to fight someone who's naturally bigger, and if you lose, you lose your title shot? Will she take that fight? That's an interesting thing, too. If, if Maya loses her battle with the scale, which, like I said, she's done in the last two fights, do you fight a bigger fight fighter and then lose your, your shot, lose your opportunity? I don't know if I would do that. Now, that being said, I think Joanne Calderwood is the better puncher. I think Maya is probably the better kicker and is is excellent in the clinch. Uh, Calderwood says, when we start mixing up, Maya's going to try and take me down, which means she's prepared for that kind of strategy. I think it'll be mostly a stand-up battle. And I like what I've seen out of Calderwood's punches. Uh, she sits down very well in her punches. She mixes it up very well. She throws in just enough kicks to kind of get her opponent thinking low and then going high. I may be a little biased because I interviewed her and I like her and I think she's yeah, she can get over this. She can get her title shot, which is important. I think she's very, very motivated. And I like to reward the fighter that stepped up late. I'm going with Calderwood in this one, probably by decision. This probably goes a distance, which means little tiny differences are definitely magnified. We're probably not going to see the big knockout. We're going to see the flashy submission. At this weight class, these two fighters, they tend to go the distance. I think that's what, that's what happens again. And I say Calderwood gets the nod by decision, but... Could be my heart talking more than my head. So the main event, this is very, very interesting. Derek Brunson uh, versus Edmund Shabazian. Okay, Shabazian, of course, undefeated, 11-0, 10 of them finishes, 9 of them knockouts. When he came into the UFC and he won his first one by decision, a lot of people thought, well, that's Ronda Rousey's boy. He's kind of getting a shot. He'll be out of here soon. Since then, he's looked impressive. And what impresses me the most about him very quick left hook, fast hands. He doesn't go nuts for the knockout. He doesn't throw big wide punches. He's not overly aggressive early. Nice footwork, clean combinations, hands high, but when he hurts you, he finishes you. That's what he does. That's what he's great at. When he finds an opening, it is all over you because he has great finishing instincts. Now, Derek Brunson, uh, his issue is... He's always failed against elite talent. He's lost to Jacare twice. He's lost to UO Romero. He's lost to Anderson Silva, Israel Adesanya. I mean, the best of the best, yeah, but he's every time it's been a step-up fight, he's lost. But he's never had a step-down fight, meaning he's never fought a, a mid-level talent and lost. You, coming off the win over Ian Heinish, Ian Heinish, up-and-coming guy, a lot of physical talent, very explosive, hurt him early. He came back, righted the ship, and use his wrestling to get back in that fight, right? Um, Elias Theodoro, a, a mid-level guy, really, really awkward style. He made it about his wrestling, kept the pressure on, and won that fight. You know, give him a mid-level guy, Uriah Hall, uh, Lorenz Larkin. Every time he's faced that mid-level kind of up-and-coming middleweight, he's always beat him. He's never had that bad night against a mid-range guy. The only guys that, that beat him are the best of the best of the last five years. Will he have that on Saturday? 
I look at the Israel Adesanya fight where he went, and this was a an All American, I think Division Two, and he was going for these leaping punches just out of nowhere against a great counter striker. He was doing things that almost guaranteed he got countered, that guaranteed he got knocked out. Just horrible fight IQ in that fight, and it ended terribly for him. I think that catches up with him here, too. He tends to take risks on the feet. If he sticks to his wrestling and um, keeps Shabazian off his feet, makes it a wrestling match more than a kickbox match, he has the tools to win this. So I think he leaps at some point and gets hurt. How he responds, if he gets hurt and responds the way he did against Ian Heinish, who, who didn't have him that badly hurt, but had him rocked a bit, and you know stays calm, stays cool, goes back to his wrestling, he can win this fight. If he tries to get back into it with some leaping punches and I'm going to fight fire with fire, he's going to get knocked out. He's going to get knocked out bad. I just don't see a fight for 25 minutes where he doesn't open himself up to Shabazian's power. And Shabazian has real power. So I think this is the fight where he finally loses to a mid-level up-and-comer and Shabazian gets another finish. Probably could be early, but let's say second round. Uh, for Shabazian. I think Shabazian has real talent. We've kind of seen the ceiling on where Derek Brunson is. A high ceiling. He's lost to the best of the best. But we've seen his ceiling. We haven't seen Shabazian's ceiling yet. We don't know how good he can be. We don't know how far he can go. I think he has momentum. He wins probably by stoppage second or third round. So anyway, that's what I think. I'll be back afterwards to own all of my picks as usual. Appreciate you.